everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, welcome. We're the Garso Twins, I'm Carly. And I'm Britta. And today we're gonna to be doing our Best of Beauty of 2019. We do this every year, we go through like our favorite foundation, primer, concealer, mm -hmm. etc. And then we're gonna do a whole nother video with like hair care and skincare. Mm -hmm. So this is just makeup, mm -hmm. let's get into it. Also, Luna wanted to help us film today. Yeah, and she's always our favorite of the year. She's our favorite girl. We love yeah. her. Okay. So, if she's making noise or you see a tail, that's just Luna. Or the fuzzies on her head. Yeah. Okay, first up is primer. And you guys know that we're not really, like, religious primer users. Mm -hmm. um, but we have kind of, like, primer alternative favorites. Yeah. So, mine is the Drunk Elephant D Bronzy Anti-Pollution Sunshine Drops. Um, mine looks wrecked. <laughs> this has lasted me so long. Um, basically, it's, like, a bronze-toned... I guess you would call it like, I don't even know if it's a serum. There's like peptides in here, um, good skincare ingredients. It's basically like a shimmery bronze drop that I just put into um, my foundation usually or I'll mix it in with my moisturizer or my SPF to just add like a nice bronzy layer before foundation. And I really love it. It's good stuff. I think it's totally worth the money, especially since this fluid ounce has lasted me almost like a whole year, which is awesome. And mine is the Ilia True Skin Radiant Priming Serum. It says firming and smoothing aloe infused. And this is basically like a hydrating serum with, well, what I think is mica in it. So it has like blurring properties to the skin, but it hydrates. It kind of leaves the skin a little bit sticky or tacky, I should say, which I like because it really helps your foundation adhere to it. But it does provide hydration. It gives, like, like I said, a slight blurry, glowing effect to the skin. I really love how this looks. It doesn't feel heavy. My issue with primers, I heard someone say this in a recent video that they feel like a lot of hydrating primers are just like another moisturizer, which is like I already use my moisturizer. Mm -hmm. Why do I need another moisturizer? So I like this because it's very lightweight but still adds hydration and still gives me that glow that I want. This is like such an innovative product in my opinion. Okay, next up is foundation. For me, this was huge because if you guys have watched our past two years best of beauty i don't think i put a foundation in either and i talked about bare minerals complexion rescue and laura mercier tinted moisturizer because i just prefer a light base over foundation but this year everything is so dirty i apologize i discovered the shiseido synchro skin self-refreshing foundation i'm in the shade cashmere 260 and i love this stuff alone it actually has spf 30 which is really good for a foundation and alone it just blurs your skin like nothing else it makes it look so airbrushed and flawless um it's a bit thick which is my only gripe with it it's kind of hard to blend you have to like really get in there with a brush and blend it in but besides that it just leaves your skin with the most flawless beautiful finish it lasts all day my favorite way to wear it is actually mixed with bare minerals complexion rescue which is what i have on my face today um i think the two combine kind of the Bare Minerals thins it out a bit to make it easier to spread, but then this adds that blurring effect, which I really love. So awesome foundation, and I'm so happy I found a foundation I finally like really love. And mine this year is the same as last year, the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Foundation. I feel like this is so long wearing on the skin. It doesn't break up and make your skin look patchy and weird. It's a pretty thin formula, so it gives a good amount of like medium coverage without being heavy on the skin. They have a Good shade range, I would mm -hmm. say, like lots of neutral outer tones. I wear the shade 425. Um, it has broad spectrum SPF 25. I can't say enough good things about this. This has been my favorite for at least last year. It could have been the one before too. This is mm -hmm. just like my favorite foundation. It's so beautiful. Next up is under eye corrector because we use this step in our routine, so mm -hmm. we thought we'd talk about it. Um, this year we both discovered, and I made it into my favorites, the Tarte CC under eye corrector. This was an Alana Davison recommendation. It looks like this. My, again, all my makeup is so disgusting, but you know it's used. Um, it just has a very emollient, creamy consistency. It's it's pink and peachy, but not. It has a lot of beige in it. Like it's not. A super super effective corrector but for me it works really well at kind of canceling out some of that darkness under my eyes and I also think it adds like that emollient hydrating factor that a lot of correctors to me are really dry and this one has that nice emolliency that really makes my under eyes look hydrated and youthful so really love this and glad I picked it up this year my favorite corrector is the Charlotte Tilbury like magic corrector in the shade 2 medium it's a true peach shade so it's really really 
great at canceling out those dark tones under the eyes. And I love the Tarte CC. I prefer that formula a little bit more. Well, I don't know. I really love this formula. Mm -hmm. It's just different. This it has a it dries down matter than the Tarte CC one does. But like I said, I prefer this shade because it cancels out all the darkness under my eyes. And you only need a little bit. Like a little bit goes a long way. Concealer layers really well over top of it, which I find is hard to find in a corrector because sometimes they don't dry down enough. So then um, when you go to layer the concealer or kind of blends together which this one dries down like I said like kind of like a demi matte finish so it's easy to layer on top of it it really cancels all those dark circles you've got a lot of product in here I've just been really loving it Okay, next up is concealer, and I don't have a lot of drugstore um, options in my favorites, but this actually is affordable and from the drugstore. It is the Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer. I am the shade, or I prefer the shade C4, but it's impossible to find. Like, it's always sold out online and in my Ulta store. So I've been using C6, and their shade range in general is so good. It's one of the reasons I like this concealer, because I can never find a concealer that matches my undertone. I'm neutral. This is supposed to be cool cool but to me it's very neutral it just doesn't have all those like harsh pinks or harsh yellows that I find in so many concealers that just look so bad on me um this stuff is so good it blends in beautifully you can use your finger or a brush or a sponge um if you let it sit on your under eyes for a bit it makes the coverage even more amplified but I'd say it's a medium coverage I wouldn't say it's full coverage like it says I believe yeah, it says full coverage. I'd say it's medium, but that's what I really like. It looks very natural under my eyes, which is what I use it for mostly under my eyes. I just love how it blends. I love how it wears. I love how it doesn't really crease too much under my eyes. It doesn't make them look dry, which is my number one thing with concealer. I hate it when concealers make my under eyes look even drier than they already are. And this one does not do that. And I think it's only like $7, which to me is an amazing deal for such a good product. Mine I don't have with me. I left it in the bathroom accidentally, but it's the same as the past, like two or three years, um, Tarte Shape Tape. That's been my go-to concealer for so long, but this year I discovered I love to mix it with the Joa Dark Circle Corrector Concealer, and I actually don't have that either because I ran out of it and I need to repurchase a new one. We're actually going to be filming an empties video too today, mm -hmm. and that's going to be in there, and I love that concealer. It has a very, like, thin consistency so I like mixing it with the tart to make the tart a little bit more spreadable because if you ever use shape tape you know it's a very thick formula and I love the two together because the Joa is like very good at blurring the under eyes and making them look smooth and then the tart really has the coverage so together they're truly unstoppable and I really need to go to CVS and get another one of the Joa concealers I forget what shade I am there aren't that many shades um, which is another reason I have to mix the Joa one with the Tarte because I don't think I could wear it on its own. It's a little bit light, but I really love them both. I've been using them constantly. Um, nothing really new there. <laughs> And next up is face powder, which is another category that we ne were never, like, too passionate yeah. about. But we both found, like, powders we really love. So, I full disclosure, I got this. In, Luna's right here. I got this in November. Was it November? Or end of October. I got it at end of October. Yeah. Um. So, it's a recent favorite, but I had to put it in this video because I just can't see myself going back to any of the translucent powders I've used before. And it's the Hourglass. Um. I think it's just called the Translucent Veil Powder. Finishing Middle Powder. Veil? Or... Oh, wait, it probably says it. Yeah. Translucent setting, veil translucent setting powder. Um, and this stuff is amazing. It's talc free, which is great for Brita. Mm -hmm. Um, but it just, it has like the tiniest bit of sheen on your skin, but it also really does a great job of mattifying. Like today I put a little bit too much on and my face looked pretty matte. Oh, but, you think? Well, no, within like 30 minutes, it just kind of dissipated and looked so natural. And, and glowy, that's what yeah. I love about it is mm -hmm. it just like sinks into your makeup and looks like it mattifies the areas that you want it to, but it still looks overall so natural and beautiful and like a little radiant like I said and I just bought the travel size because we were going to Nashville and I feel like this will last me a long time we've talked about this but I feel like I'm way less heavy-handed with product than mm -hmm. Brita is so things like this will last me a very long time um and I don't even know when I'm gonna have to purchase the full size like I think that this will last um, but I will purchase the full size because I think it's such a good powder. Yeah, I actually just purchased the full size, which I, I felt like I couldn't put it in this video because, like Carly said, I love it and I've literally been using it every day. It's what I'm wearing on my face today. But because I just bought it, like, less than a month ago, mm -hmm. I thought, like, I can't put that in my best of beauty for 2019. So, mm. my powder favorite, which I would say I like just as much as the Hourglass, I just use it in a different way. The Hourglass, I absolutely have to use under my eyes because it does have a little bit of 
glow to it and I feel like it makes the under eyes look more flattering. This I can't use under my eyes but it's really good to set your face for a little added coverage and to make your makeup last all day and it has such a beautiful blurring effect. It's the Jouer Soft Focus Hydrate and Set Powder. I have the shade light and like look at how much of this I've used and it's basically almost gone. I love it so much. It's talc free. Um, like I said I use this to set my whole face and I like that a little bit goes a long way. I know it might not seem like it because I've already hit pan. But if you have experience with tell free powders, most of the time they have a lot of kickback if, and that goes for everything. Like well, for um, that kind of powder, you can't really tell. But mm -hmm. for any type of pressed powder, pressed pigment like an eyeshadow, you'll notice like that you just lose a lot of powder. So I feel like that's why I went through this so quickly was because it just like when you put your brush in there, powder just kind of goes everywhere. But like I said, it has, it looks so blurring on the skin, like nothing else I've ever used. And it doesn't look heavy. If you set it with setting spray, it just looks very natural and it makes your makeup last all day. And I haven't heard anyone talk about this and I feel like it's such a good powder. So I wanted to mention it, but like I said, I wouldn't put this under my eyes. It's a little too heavy for that. I would use the hourglass there. And in the winter, I have been gravitating more towards the hourglass because my skin's so dry. If you have like combo skin, I feel like you would really like the Jouer one though. Next up is bronzer, which might be like our favorite product. It is. Bronzers Aside are, from mascara, I know, bronzers are amazing. Um, and and I will be the first to say mm -hmm. I'm so heavy handed with bronzer. Carly says I'm heavy handed, but yeah. especially with bronzer. Um, in the past, I think I've always talked about the Milk Makeup Baked Bronzer, which is like the best cream bronzer. I love it so much. But I, this year, I fell back in love with the Hourglass bronzers and I purchased a new one. So I have owned a Luminous Bronze Light for like two or three years now and I love that one but it was always a little dark for my skin and very warm so I really only used it in the summer and I wanted an hourglass bronzer to wear in the winter too because I just love the formula so I got a nude bronze light it looks like this and it's very buildable it's definitely a lot um, lighter and more sheer than luminous bronze light it's more matte it's not matte at all it's more of like a satin finish but it has way less like pearl in it than the luminous bronze light does and it's way more neutral so it's just the best bronzer I've been obsessed with it I have it on right now um, and the thing I love most about the hourglass bronzers is how they blend on your face like you can use any brush any tool and it just blends itself like it is it's like a miracle. It just has to be the baked technology. It just makes it look so seamless and blended and just like natural and one with your skin. I would say that it's not the most long lasting bronzer. Like it, it wears probably like six hours, but it's still on my face. It doesn't come off, but it kind of like will move from like my hairline and stuff like that. Um, but that doesn't bother me because the formula is just so stunning. I love it so much and definitely nude bronze light was a favorite this year, but I still love luminous bronze light, especially in the summer. And my favorite bronzer this year, well, you guys know that I had a very devastating loss this year with my Bare Minerals Invisible Bronzer. That is my all-time favorite bronzer, but I felt like Which, I that's so similar to these Hourglass it bronzers. So They're probably made by the same manufacturer. They are made by the oh, same. They are? <laughs> then, yeah. Then if they you are. can't get that anymore and you loved it like Britta and you're willing to spend the but money. But it's the shade. It's I the know, shade. I, I had, know. That shade medium was like the perfect neutral tone because mm -hmm. Bare Minerals is so good at neutral tones. Mm -hmm. And it was like the perfect neutral bronzer and I'm so picky about a bronzer shade. I feel like almost more so than the formula. Like I just want my bronzer mm -hmm. to give me warmth without like an orange, without looking too cool, but to look very natural at the same time. So anyways, that bronzer was my favorite and I still have it and use it, but I try not to talk about it on this channel because you can't buy it anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's honestly, mine's probably getting expired at this point. So I was looking for an alternative, just something that I could literally wear every day without thinking twice. And I decided to try the Lawless Summer Skin Velvet Matte Bronzer in the shade Golden Hour. And I've truly fallen in love with it. Another powder product that I've hit pan on, which I will say I use a lot of bronzer, but I think this formula is so powdery that that's why I've hit pan. And it's almost a little upsetting because it's so pricey. I think mm -hmm. this bronzer is like $38, which that's not like hourglass prices. Yeah, but, but like I said, I've had my other one for three years. Exactly, and like the Bare uh -huh. Minerals one, one of those would last me a full year. So the fact that I think I just bought this like two months ago, I'm like, this is where I'm at. It is weird. It is kind of... It's a little upsetting, but I love the product. I think it blends onto the skin really beautifully. The color is so flattering, at least for my skin tone. It's just like my perfect matte bronzer. And I'm also so picky about matte bronzers because you never want them to look flat. You do want them to still like give your skin life. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this one does that. It is truly like a summer skin product. 
Um, I really love it, but like I said, I'm going through it pretty quickly, but it's such a beautiful bronzer. Next up is blush, which I feel like this year was like the year of blush. There was so well, many releases. Every year has been our year of blush. We've no, but like from it. brands. There was a yeah, lot of releases. Um, and it was hard for me because I had two favorites that I discovered this year. This one and then the Surratt blushes. But this one I have longer and I've been using it more lately because of the shimmeringness in it. Um, and it's the Charlotte Tilbury, what are these called? Cheek to Chic Swish and Glow Blusher. And this is the shade Pillow Talk. I've had conversations with multiple people about how the Pillow Talk collection is beautiful in general, but like the blush is the real star in the show, which like the lip products get so much recognition, Yeah. but out of the eyeshadow palette, the blush, like this is the prettiest product in that line, in my opinion. It is the perfect like deep rosy tone, which doesn't look as deep um, once you put it on your cheeks. Um, these blushes have a lot of pearl in them, so they it looks like beautiful, like a beautiful sheen on your face. It's so buildable. You really can't go overboard, similar to the Hourglass um, powders. Like, I feel like it just kind of blends itself and just looks really beautiful no matter, like, how you apply it or what you do. Um, and, yeah, normally I don't really like pearly blushes. I prefer a matte blush, or in the past I have, or, like, a satin. And this has, like, visible pearl, and for some reason I just can't stop using it. I just think... It's so, it makes you look so youthful and beautiful. Like, I'm, I'm obsessed with this blush. Mine gives the same effect. It's the mm -hmm. Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur blush in the shade Blurred Buff. Specifically, the shade is truly the perfect yeah. everyday blush the shade. The rest of the shades aren't my fave. Yeah, I hope they expand, though. Mm -hmm. um, this one is like a true peachy brownie nude, and it just goes with any look you're doing. Mm -hmm. I love this because of the formula. It I apply it with a Sybil brush because it's kind of a cream-to-powder finish. So it's so effortless because you just like dab your brush in there, swirl it onto your cheeks, and you're good to go. It just gives your cheeks like a youthful look because of the pearl in mm -hmm. here, like kind of like what Carly was talking about. So that's why I like using it every day because I do have dry skin, and I just know that when I use this blush, I'm gonna look more like awake and healthy, and that's all we ever want to look mm -hmm. like. Um, and like I said, the shade is just truly unbelievable. And uh, talk about a product that I go through slowly. Like I literally use this every day and it doesn't even look like I've used I it at all. I think so it's the formula. The formula is so beautiful on this. Okay, next up is highlighter. I have a lot of Hourglass products in this I have video. a lot of Hourglass They products. are so good. <laughs> um, this is the Hourglass, uh, what are these called? Vanish Flash Highlighting Sticks? Mm -hmm. Is that what they're called? Vanish Flash Highlighting Sticks and this is the shade Champagne Flash. I love gold flash too, but champagne flash is definitely my most used, if you couldn't tell. I mean, I've like used this thing to death. Um, my favorite way to apply it is with the brush. I can also use my finger, and I've used a sponge before too, but I love just dabbing a brush in and kind of like dabbing and swirling it on my cheekbones, and it just blends it so flawlessly. For being a drier formula, it really works well. I love this product. I don't really know what else to say. I also love the Charlotte Tilbury Liquid Highlight. Um, what is that thing called? It's like the Beauty Light one. But this to me is easier to use, so I picked it over that because um, I just think it's so easy and simple. And just, again, like all these products, they just blend so seamlessly into your skin, and that's the look I like. Like where you can't tell where like one thing starts, one thing stops. Everything looks very like natural but put together. And this can be built up very metallic, but if you just use a little bit like I have it on today, I just think it's like, it's obviously a visible highlight, but it still looks and blends in with your skin. Um, the pearl is really beautiful in here. I think there's like a few pearl sizes so that you get some dimension. The shade is perfect for my skin tone. Um, it's a nice like neutral beigey champagne tone. I just love this product. I think it's so good. I think when they were released, they got a lot of hype. And then the hype has kind of died down, and I don't know why, because it's the best. Like, <laughs> I just love it. And I have two that I want to mention. One of them is another Lawless product. The two brands that I've, like, fallen for this year are Lawless and Ilia. And they're both clean Ilya beauty. is so good, too. But they're yeah. both so good. And I, well, I had the primer from Ilia. Um, oh, I have one more Ilia product. Yeah, there's a lot of good Ilia products I could have mentioned, but, like, yeah, I just, we just go them towards the end of the year, It was. Too. Yeah. So this is the Lawless um, Lucid Skin Highlighter, which I love that name, in the shade Afternoon Delight, which I will say, they need to, like, expand their range. This is the only highlight shade, and they have two shades of bronzer. I totally understand they're, like, a new brand. Well, they just I got all that, that investment. The funding, so hopefully yeah. Hopefully that so I hope they do. Help. But I love this formula, and this actually will last me probably my whole life. It's, like, the same size as the bronzer, mm -hmm. and it's, you don't use as much highlighter, obviously, and this is a really unique texture, because it almost is like hard to the touch like when you put your brush in there there is no kickback 
but I feel like very that's pressed. very pressed, yeah. But I like that because I feel like it just picks up the perfect amount of product and it just looks so natural on the skin. It's not like that blinding over the top highlight. I could really put this like all over my face. The tone is really beautiful, a nice neutral undertone. I just really love this. I feel like I'm so over like the blinding highlight look mm -hmm. and so many powder or highlighters are like that. And you can't like subtract. It's yeah, just like yeah. on your so face. Yeah, yeah. So this you can build it up if you want, but I just love the look it gives. It just does look like lucid skin. I think the name's perfect. But I do want to mention this because on a day when I do like a full face of makeup and I do want a little bit more highlight, I always top the lucid skin with this one shade from the Rach Loves and Pixie palette. It's called Lace. Hmm, let me see if I can show you. Uh, I don't want to, this mirror is huge. It's this shade up here and I really hope they release it in a single because I love the Pixie formula. I think that was my favorite highlighter last year and I still like those. Um, but the undertones like aren't perfect. I usually have to mix a few shades and so that's why I went with the Lucid Skin because it's just a great everyday highlighter. But this is so intense in like a really beautiful glass skin like way and the shade of this specific lace is like the perfect like oh, icy it's really champagne. similar to this. Isn't it pretty? Aren't they similar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I, I do really like tea as well. Like I'll mix these two sometimes. Maybe if I'm self-tanned, I'll add a little more of the gold. But this lace shade, 10 out of 10. I, she did such a good job picking these shades. When I first watched her video and she swatched them, I knew I would like it, but I didn't realize how much I would use it. Like just when you need a little bit extra oomph like on the top of the cheekbone, I always go to this, but I really, really hope they release it in a single because this palette is bulky. I don't have that much like storage. So I highly recommend this. I would buy it just for that one shade. Okay, next up is eyeshadow and this was hard because I feel like this year I really just used like a single shadow here or there and I really got into like cream and liquid eyeshadows and I don't think I used a palette like I maybe used uh, palettes like five times the whole year. Like I just love like a one and done eyeshadow and so I discovered this guy and it's obscenely expensive but it is amazing and it's the Tom Ford, um, well they're the cream and powder duos but the bottom shade is what I'm really after and it's the shade Golden Peach. Um, I never use the top like sparkle coat and I'm really upset that they just won't. It looks like this. It looks pretty in the pan but it's just not my style. Um, Tom Ford actually sells the cream bases by themselves in a lot of the shades but for some reason they will not release this as a single and I think it's just to get be able to buy the duo because it's so much more expensive but it's the prettiest shade it is like it says a golden peach it's like a peachy tone that has a little bit of golden like shift to it with some gold pearl in there it's so it's dark huh yeah, it is. I like that it's darker because mm -hmm. you can, if you use like the tiniest amount, it has the most beautiful moussey texture. The texture reminds me a lot of that Maybelline, what was that, like the Dream Mousse? Matte Mousse? Mousse? Yeah, oh, but not days. matte, like more like emollient, but just like see how it looks. Yeah. Like how you like can stick your finger in and like feel that texture, um, but it's very like air wicked, if that makes sense. Um, so the wicked texture just glides on your eyes so nicely that you can like literally use the tiniest amount and just get like... A basically like a pale peach sheen on your eye or you can build it up and I just literally use my finger like I'll dab it on and just build it up to get like like the mask tone in the pan like I like this color on my eyes so I'll build it up to this color and then just blend out the edges with a buffing brush and I am just so obsessed with this formula it lasts all day I get so many compliments every time I wear it and I think it just has to do with the shade because it's so unique I've never mm -hmm. seen a shade like this um and yeah, it's so easy to use and lasts all day. I don't know what else you could expect out of an eye product. And I think even though it's so expensive, it's worth the money because I've never, ever felt something as similar. Even the Charlotte Tilbury ones that are really similar, the Eyes to Mesmerize, those ones are just like thicker and a little hard to work with in my opinion. And these are just so much smoother and flawless. Like I can't even describe the formula. In mine, this year, I think if I bought an eyeshadow palette, it was six pans or less. Like I'm mm -hmm. just over the big palettes. I can't stand them. You can't create a whole look, like it's too many options. Mm -hmm. um, so I will say, I don't have it with me because I just brought this one, but my favorite formula is the Ilia formula. I think that they are so beautiful. They just blend into themselves. Like the pigmentation is amazing. That is my favorite eyeshadow formula, but this palette I just use more because of the colors. And I will say I bought, so in the Ilia, I bought the warm nude and then the cool nude, I think is what they're called. I have both of them now. 
and I use them both a lot, but just on an everyday basis, I gravitate towards this Lawless The Little One palette because the shades in here are like my ideal shades. I think if I created a neutral palette, it would be this palette. I truly love it so much. I'm wearing it today, and it's so funny, a few of you, or maybe, I don't know, I've just seen a few comments like, can you do a get ready with me using that palette? But all I ever do is put this neutral, I'm like really bad at the shade names, but this neutral brown in the crease and then I use a glitter glue like I do with any metallic shade or shimmer shade just because it makes it more long wearing and I use like this bronzy shade on the lid and it's so easy it always looks beautiful I get so many compliments when I wear this eyeshadow and it literally lasts all day it doesn't crease it doesn't wear away it just truly lasts and I, I just love the tones in here they're very neutral you have a black you have a cream you can do an all matte look there are only two shimmers I wear them both I feel like that's my issue with so many palettes is that I don't wear all the shimmers. As I was saying, my pet peeve with eyeshadow palettes is that a lot of them have shimmers, too many shimmers, and then a lot of them like aren't wearable all over the lid. You kind of just don't know where to wear them on the eye, so then what's the point in having them there? So that's why I love this one because I wear every shade, including the shimmers. It's just such a good staple palette. Next up is mascara, and this is another area where a drugstore really impresses me. Mm -hmm. So I have an afford affordable option. This is the CoverGirl Flourish by Lash Blast, the wand. It's actually a molded wand, which I never like. <laughs> I'm like a nylon, like bristle brush girl through and through. But for some reason, this mascara is so good to me. It never applies too much. It never looks clumpy. It, you can look very natural or build it up to be very um, lengthening and volumizing. It's not super black, so if that's really important to you, I just wanted to call that out. Um, it lasts really long. It doesn't smudge. It's just such a good mascara. Whenever I'm without it, I have to repurchase. I'm actually not wearing it right now because I wanted um, a little bit of a bolder lash, but for every day, this stuff's incredible. Love it. And mine for the mid length year in a row is the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. I can literally never be without this. Yeah, I love that too, but I buy a backup when I run out because I just think it gives the lashes like that falsies look without looking like you're wearing. I mean, no one likes to look like they're mm -hmm. wearing false lashes, so this just gives you the most volume. So black, long lasting. I truly love it. But I also wanted to mention the Ilia, what is this called? Oh, I love this too. Limitless Lash Mascara. It's Gara. so good. I, I love mini. that this was, well, it gets such good reviews on Sephora, and I had, I tried the mini That's first. what I'm wearing today. I tried the mini first, and then I got this one because it's so unique. I don't even know how to explain it. Like the brush, I only really use this curved side. Do I you use both. Okay. Um, and it's molded, but I feel like it still adds volume and I don't know how they do it. I use these together, so I'll go in with this and then I'll go over it with this to kind of separate the lashes a little bit, but it, this does build up volume on its own. If you use it by itself, it mm -hmm. just takes a little bit longer, but it's such a beautiful formula. It doesn't irritate my eyes. It's very black really good. It's I know. so good. I actually think that it's kind of similar to this one in a way. Oh, I, I think the brush on this is so much better. Yeah. Like, no, I it's like so that. good, but I have an issue with buying nice mascaras. Like, I tried that I know, Tom Ford Godass mascara this year. We had it at work, and I tried it for, like, a month straight, and it truly is the best mascara I've ever tried, but, like, I would never recommend that because it's, like, $60. Yeah. Obama talks about it in her video. But that's why I think molded wand formulas, they're a bit thinner, and they last longer. Like, Lash Paradise is so thick, mm -hmm. I go through it quicker. Mm -hmm. So, when I use the two together, it lasts me, like, quite a while. Okay, next up is brow, and I usually talk about like a brow pencil, but I wanted to switch it up this year because I've really been loving the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. I think this is my third tube of this. I've worn it all year. Um, I'm wearing it in my brows today. I have to wear like a pencil or some sort of product underneath to color in um, my bare spots, but this stuff, again, it's like a cute little molded wand. Um, it has a lot of... It's a big brush. Yeah, but it's, I don't know, it's hard to describe. Like, all you have to do is just, like, blend it through your eyebrows, and it never applies too much. It never dries down, like, white and flaky like some clear brow gels do. It just holds your brows in place all day and looks so natural. Like, I think that's the thing I like most about this. Out of any clear brow gel or brow gel I've tried in general, this looks so natural. Like, you can't even really tell you have gel in. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even have, like, a super high shine finish, which is another pet peeve of mine. So, really love this stuff. I mean, people rave about it for a reason. I think yeah. it's a great product. My favorite brow product of the year is the CoverGirl... Brow so pencil. I, I think this was mine last year, yeah. possibly the year before. This is my favorite just because the price for one, it's so affordable, and the formula. Like, at first, part of me was like, am I tricking myself to thinking that this is a great product because it's so cheap and it's like easy to replace? But then as I kept using it, I was like, no, this is just a really good pencil. Mm -hmm. It just 
it kind of stays where you put it but it still blends out but it dries down almost like a powdery finish so it looks very natural I love this shade the shade honey brown works really well for me it's not too warm the shade honey brown is very misleading in my opinion um the spoolie is really nice on the end I've I truly just love this pencil mm -hmm. I think it's so good and then I just want to quickly mention the revolution I only picked one because I thought we were picking one I know but I just want to mention okay. it the brow gel um, in ash brown. This is, I just spoke about this recently. It's a recent find, so I just wanted to do like an honorable mention. But like Carly said with her formula, like because it's so minimal, I feel like it just looks really natural. Like this is so fluid that I feel like it just looks really natural on the eyebrows, but it still holds them in place. It adds the perfect amount of pigment. The brush is really small, so if you're not blessed by the brow gods like Carly is like me I really do have to fill in like the end of my brows and this really helps add pigment without putting too much product in your brows so I just wanted to mention it because it's a good affordable brow gel okay next up is setting spray and I think I put this as my favorite the past three years and I don't think this is gonna change anytime soon ever if that mm -hmm. um, it is Mac fix plus it is the best spray there's something about it like I will use cheaper alternatives or just alternatives in general I'll like switch it up and I always go back to this in fact me I too. have a backup coming right now because I go through this like nothing else like we've talked about I'm pretty like I don't know if I just don't use a lot of product but I go through things so incredibly slow but with setting spray I just fly through this I fly through it and I don't know how but I use it every day it's amazing and I think it's the glycerin that really I think it's the glycerin too I had so, like I was using I still like the new NYX dewy finish setting spray but this like I switched back to because my skin has just become so dry and sensitive mm -hmm. and I didn't want anything with alcohol and this has the glycerin and it just truly does Give like, your skin that like glow. moisturizes. Well, mm -hmm. not like at an actual like efficacy level. No. But it definitely adds like something. Yeah. And um, it never makes your face too wet. Like mm -hmm. I cannot stand when that happens. It's just perfect. It's great for applying um, shadows. Like today I used one of the Tom Ford wet dry palettes. And then I just sprayed my brush with this before going in to make the formula wet. And it's just perfect for that. Um, I wish they would release a fragrance-free version, but ugh, that'll be the day. I, I think they will. I think they will eventually. Yeah, they're, maybe. they're kind of doing things different nowadays. Okay, next up is lip, and I could not narrow it down, so let's just go through these. <laughs> um, I have two lip liner favorites. Well, which... I'll just talk about these because these are. Oh, mine. okay. Oh, yeah. We we um are duplicative here, so yeah. I'll talk about the ones that Britta won't talk about. Um, so lip liner. And this is my number one. It is the Victoria Beckham. Um, what are, what did she call these? Lip definers and number two. Fun fact, I lost this somewhere along the way. I never lose makeup and this must have fallen out of my purse and I had to repurchase it and it was painful because with shipping it was like $30. But I loved it so much that I had to buy a new one because it's just that incredible. Um, I don't even think the formula is that innovative. It's a wooden pencil, which is our favorite lip liner format. Like, mm -hmm. love a wooden pencil so much. It's just the shade. This tone is like the exact undertone of my lips, just slightly, slightly deeper. And because of that, it makes it so easy to overline and looks so natural. And then I can apply like any color on top. And I just couldn't live without it just because the shade was so perfection for my lips. Um, but it is a really nice formula as well. It's very creamy, it glides on nicely, it lasts all day. It's clean. Yeah, it's clean, it works on its own. Um, it works with lip color on top of it. And I also love the packaging. She did a really good job for being like a wooden pencil. It looks very nice. Um, and then the lipstick. So, well, I have two, but Britta will talk about the other one. Um, the one I used by far the most this year was Pat McGrath La Beja. It's in the Lux Trans formula, and I will say I like the matte trans formula so much more. Um, I wish she had a shade that was equivalent to this in that formula, but it's basically just like a peachy beige brown shade. I've talked about this so many times on this channel. I've worn it so many times. Um, it's just beautiful. It looks so like a natural but obviously I'm wearing a lip color it complements my skin tone so well um, I've worn it so much this year so highly recommend that okay and my two favorites my favorite lip liner I here too. is max strip down Which we it's both discovered this year and it's shocking it's been around, for been around so forever long. it's so good it's like the perfect mm -hmm. like 
neutral with like a hint of yellow. There's a lot of yellow in it, I'd say. It's like a yellow a brown is how I describe okay. it. Okay, yellow brown. Um, I don't so think there's a lot of pink in it. If you think that there is because of there this bottom. There is no pink in it. I would buy a lip liner with pink in it. No, like the tiniest amount of pink. Like this, this no, shade there's no app pink in it. applicator looks a little pinky to me and I'm like, mm. I feel like people don't know that strip down is like basically a yellow brown. Yeah, there's no pink in it. Mm -hmm. I hate pinky nudes and this is like the best because there's no pink in it. Mm -hmm. It deepens all up a lot of my like lighter lipsticks. Mm -hmm. Which is perfect for the winter. It deepens up any lipstick, but it's so good. I use it just about every day. Mm -hmm. And then my favorite lipstick of the year was the Lisa Aldridge Velvet Fawn. Fawn. It's incredible, you guys. It's so good, but I'm so mad. Mine broke. The bullet broke. And you guys know these oh, are. Oh, it didn't expensive. break all the way through. Well, it didn't break all the way through, but like it was pushed up against the side. Like, look at this huge oh, chunk. Happened to me taken too. out of my beautiful bullet. What happened to me too? No, it's like loose. See? Oh, it is loose. It came out of the what's it called? Yeah. Base. And I'm so mad. I'm so mad. I'm trying not to like let it ruin my life, but ugh. I was like, but this lipstick is still in stock, and I felt so weird recommending it because I was like, oh, I think they're out of stock, but they are, so we can recommend it. Yeah, and I'm gonna try to get a replacement. It's the best lipstick formula I've ever tried. It's in my such life. a good formula. The color is so beautiful, layered with a darker lip liner. It's like my perfect nude. It's what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing the Lisa Eldridge formula, but in velvet ribbon, which is the red. Yeah, I really had to be careful applying it. I mean, I'm gonna make it work if they won't replace it for me, or I'll just buy a new one, but. It's so good. It's worth the price. Mm -hmm. It really the is. best nude. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We know a lot of you tune in for this video every year because yeah. you want to hear about what we've been loving every year, and we want to hear what you've been loving too because you guys have the best recommendations. You do.